Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and welcome to our first lecture of Chapter 8. And um, before we actually get into the note handout, I want to give you guys just a little historical background on um, some of the concepts we're going to be covering this chapter. And um, the major one is covering this specific mathematician, Leonard Euler. Yes, it is pronounced Euler. And he lived back in the 1700s. And most of you guys probably haven't heard of him, but he has actually done a ton of stuff mathematically that we have used this particular year already. In fact, Euler was the first person to use the notation f of x to represent a function. He also introduced our notation for trigonometric functions, which we will get into towards the end of this semester. So instead of writing out sine, cosine, tangent, he was the one that kind of abbreviated the way we write them and made that commonplace. Euler also introduced the Greek letter for summations, and we use this epsilon quite frequently um, for summations. He also was the first one to use the letter I to denote imaginary numbers. Um, and he made using the symbol pi popular. He was definitely not the first to do that, but um, his use of that in all of his uh, mathematical proofs and stuff really populated that particular number. The last notation thing we're going to talk about with Euler is he used the letter E to represent the base of a natural logarithm. And um, that's the button LN on your calculator. And E, we, we now call Euler's number. It's named after him. But he was the first one to do that. Um, now, Euler did a lot of other things mathematically in some higher level math and some more complex fields. But I just wanted to kind of highlight some of these notation things he did because that's stuff that we are familiar with and things that we use and it impacts us. If you guys ever look up Euler, one of the first things that will kind of pop up um, is Euler's identity, and it is this equation, e to the ix equals the cosine of x plus the sine of x. And this formula is actually really, really famous and really important. In fact, what a lot of people will do when going through Euler's identity is they let x equal pi. And I know we really haven't learned this yet, and that's okay, but um, when I do e to the i times pi equals cosine of pi plus sine of pi, um, we end up getting, when we evaluate cosine pi and sine of pi, we get e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. And this is actually called one of the most beautiful mathematical equations in the whole world. And I know that sounds weird to call an equation beautiful, but we're going to talk a little bit about why mathematicians might think that about this equation. So you're probably asking yourself, why is it known as the most beautiful equation in the world? And there's really two major reasons for that. The first is that these three basic operations occur exactly once. Addition, multiplication, and ex exponentiation. Okay, so taking e to this exponent. So each of those three basic operations happen exactly once. The other thing that makes it really important is that we actually link the five most important numbers. And um, <clears throat> I was reading some, doing some research on this, and someone said, if you were gonna have a party and invite five numbers, these are the five numbers that you would want to invite. And let me just go a little bit into each number and explain why these five numbers are important. Firstly, zero is the additive identity. We learned about that all the way back in chapter one. One is our multiplicative identity. So that's what makes those two constants extremely important is those are both of our identities. Pi is a value that is extremely important in both geometry and trigonometry. 
And it would be kind of impossible for us to do a lot of that work without having those two values. E is the base of natural logarithms, and we are going to talk about E a lot today and this and get into natural logarithms this chapter. And lastly, even though you don't necessarily love it, um, we do need I because that's very important in complex numbers. So Euler managed to take these five important numbers that are all different from one another and link them in this equation. In fact, this equation is often called God's equation, for only he could create something so amazing, taking these numbers that are seemingly so different and um, kind of being able to enable someone's mind to come up with this equation that actually makes a true statement. Our focus today is going to specifically be on the number E, and today our introduction really is just to what is E and what are we dealing with. Some applications that we see for the number E, um, one is compound interest, so if we're um, investing money and the interest is compounded annually, or I'm sorry, if it's compounded continuously, um, we end up using E to go ahead and solve for that equation. Also, um, in chemistry, I know a lot of times you guys talk about half-lives, um, especially in AP Chem, you really get into that. Um, but E is used to find the half-life of a particular element. If you put E into your calculator, you will notice that it is equivalent to 2.718281828428 dot dot dot. And um, we equate this number to kind of like pi because it is irrational like pi. Irrational, remember, means that we cannot write it as a fraction of integers. These decimals do not repeat. They do not end. It goes on forever. So that's just a little background into the history of the number E and Euler. Now we're going to transition into our calculator and where we can see some of this stuff in our calculator. Okay, so now if you guys could go ahead and take out the note handout that goes along with this lecture, we're going to go through that, through that together. And I thought it'd be more beneficial to go through um, the graphing calculator portion and show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to fill out that table, and it's giving us an n value to substitute in for n. And this is a good thing for you guys to get used to typing in your calculator. So I have 1 plus 1 divided by, and then instead of n, I'm going to do 10 to the first power. And I'm closing that parenthesis, and that is showing me that I am closing the denominator. Then I have another parenthesis, which is closing the fraction and a third parenthesis, which is closing everything that I'm going to take to the power. So now I'm going to take this to the 10 to the first power. And if you happen to have a calculator that does not put things up in exponents like mine, and it shows the caret instead, you need to be diligent of closing the parenthesis after the exponent as well. When we press enter, I should get this answer of 2.593 blah, blah, blah. And that's already in there for you. Now, the really nice thing that we can do in our calculator is I can actually bring up what I've previously typed in. So I'm going to press second entry. And I can use my arrow buttons now. And I'm going to, wherever there was a 10 to the first, I'm going to replace that to the first power with the second power and then press enter and so my next value should be 2.705 I'm gonna do second entry again and this time I'm gonna make it to the third power notice this is just much easier than typing in the third or typing in this whole expression again and again okay so you guys can kinda of see what I get to the third power now I'm going to do to the fourth power. There we go. I'm going to press enter. Notice that these values seem to be getting really, really close to each other. 
Okay, I'm gonna do second intro. This time we're doing to the fifth power. There we go. 2.718 again. And lastly, let's do it to the sixth power. <coughs> and so what I notice is that these values definitely appear to be approaching a fixed number. And we could continue going, we're not going to, but it appears that it is being, um, that it is really approaching 2.718. Okay, so that is the um, number that is being approached by using this chart. And the significant thing is that is actually the number E. And so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna show you how to find the button E to the X on your calculator. So I'm just gonna clear everything out. Um, and if you press the second button, and then our LN, and LN stands for natural logarithm, and we will get into that more um, later this chapter. But second LN gives me this E to the X. So when it's asking you for the key sequence, these buttons down here are really telling us what the key sequence should be. And it says find the value of E to the first power, so then I'm gonna type in one and enter. And amazingly, it is 2.718, which is exactly what the fixed value we were approaching in the chart was. And so that answers a lot of the questions that are on that handout. Um, the next thing that I want to show you guys is how we would graph this. So I'm going to press Y equals, and if you have anything in there, go ahead and clear it out. And I'm going to graph E to the X, so I'm pressing second LN. And this gives me e to a power. I want to use my x, t, theta, n button as my variable. So then I'm going to go ahead and press graph. And it gave me something kind of strange because my um, old window was strange. So I'm going to do zoom 6 just to make it look nicer. And we can just go ahead and see. This is what we call an exponential growth function and it's increasing quite rapidly. In fact, we're gonna learn how to graph stuff like this um, in our next lecture. But this is what our graph of y equals e to the x is going to look like. So um, this kind of takes you through the front portion or the first page of that handout. On the second page of the handout, um, we're gonna ignore the facts because we already did that together and we're gonna jump straight into actually doing the problems. So you guys should have filled out um, the first half of this particular handout when we were going through the calculator portion. Um, now I'm just focusing on these six examples because this is similar to what your suggested problems and what your homework quiz is going to look like. Um, so for one, two, and three, it says simplify the expression, leave your answer in terms of E. And this is actually a concept that we've spent a ton of time doing. We know our multiplication and addition, power of power. We know all of our exponent rules. And so we're just putting those into play again. So if I have e cubed times e to the fourth, I know that since I'm multiplying things that have the same power, I need to add them together. So my answer would be e to the seventh power. Okay, the directions tell us to leave our answer in terms of e, so that's what we did. Number two, first thing I would do, I would simplify this 10 divided by 5 and get 2. When I battle my e's, e cubed over e squared, e in the numerator wins by 1, so my answer is 2e. The third problem, I'm taking this entire quantity to the third power. I know that 1 fourth to the third power is 1 over 64 and e to the negative second power to the third power becomes e to the negative sixth because when I take an exponent to a power I need to multiply. So I end up getting 1 over 64 e to the sixth power because when I need to make an exponent positive I know I bring it down to the denominator. 
Our next problems tell us to evaluate the expressions and round our answer to three decimal places. So for number four, when I'm putting e to the 1.7 um, power into my calculator, my key sequence, first I need to press second and then ln. Okay, when I press second ln, that gives me the button that is e to the x. Okay, and all e to the x means is that it's going to give me e and I need to fill in the power. So after I get e to the x, I need to put in 1.7 and it tells me that my answer is 5.474. So 5.474 would be my final answer there. For number five, um, I'm not going to write out all the key sequence again, but once again, I'm going to have to get e to the power in my calculator and do negative three. Make sure that when we are typing negative three into our calculator that we're using negative and not subtraction. And when I go ahead and do that, I get 0 0.049, which would be 0 0.050. Now, it would make sense that this value is less than one, because I know when I, we have a negative exponent, it would be like one over e to the third power, so it makes it a decimal value. Lastly, let's look at number six. Six says two e to the one half power, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my calculator. And I end up getting 3.297 as my answer. Okay, so your homework tonight is going to be this basic and straightforward, but it's important we understand the number E because we're really going to be building on that the rest of this chapter.